Hey everyone. Hi, Macy here. Yes, this is my outfit. This is not a Halloween costume. I have to be really careful this time of year because when I go out um, in my normal clothes, uh, it can sometimes be misunderstood as a Halloween costume. Anyway, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so excited for the five day class coming up because how many of you would like to change some of the spooky stuff around dating. And I know that it can put people at a stop and make it really hard. Like you have to force yourself to have fun with it. And if there's some funk underneath and it just doesn't feel authentic to do that, then it can be really, really discouraging. And I see it a lot and I want you to know that it absolutely can change. And that's why I want to do this five day clearing the dating demon series. And, you know, I had ideas about it when I set it up because I always do. Um, and more and more and more stuff is coming. So I'm so excited to share with you more about this. So I wanted to give you the actual sort of dating demons that we're going to be talking about so that you know more specifically how this can be helpful for you. So the, the first one, so, okay, let's just be clear. These things, these are the things that are like mental, um, habitual, um, like, just a human experience that can come up that um, if we kind of buy it as real and true or believe that this is what dating is, then it will absolutely make the process miserable. So I categorize five different things so that you can have the knowingness, have the information of, oh, okay, that's something I can change. Oh, okay. Yeah, I do that. And I'll give you tools to change that. So the first one I call the vampire. So this is one of those spooky things that can disrupt our dating joy or dating happiness. Because ultimately, let's face it, when you have the desire to create a relationship, um, you can't skip dating because dating is the part where you get to know someone and see, you know, are you my person? Are you a good match for me? And that takes a little while. So if you have this idea that dating is miserable and awful and, and one, you're going to avoid it as much as possible. And two, you know, who wants to be miserable? And three, like, the quality of that if you're going into it with this uh i hate dating it sucks that's likely not the kind of relationship you're asking for so when we're creating things in our life we want to say okay what is it that i want to create okay i'd like to have a really lovely playful kind loving sexy person in my life and that energy is what you want to ultimately be able to have along the way. And so I'm going to share these five like different demon spooky things that hold you back. And then next week we're going to go into getting tools and practices to change that like that. So some will be like that. Some may take a little practice because some of these things are habits. So the first one I call the vampires and the vampires are the, um, the distractions that are outside of you. So this is the, the stuff you engage in that keep you like from being able to have fun dating. So one of the biggest vampires can be overworking. Like, do you, are you kind of a, one of the workaholic types, which, you know, I totally was this. I loved overworking. I still kind of find myself 
in that sometimes, which does take away from the living, the like doing the things that I want to do personally and with Larry. And so I have to be aware of that. So the vampires are those things outside of you. It may even be people. Do you have those energy vampire people in your life that kind of take your energy, whether it's work or a person or something else that makes it hard to be, to have room to, and space in your life to connect with a beloved. So be aware of the vampires. That one is pretty much a simple choice, but we'll talk about it more. Um, the second one I call the trolls and the goblins, and this is probably the most common. If you've heard stories about the trolls as a child, um, I always picture the bridge and the trolls living under the bridge. Well, these are commonly coming out when you've made a choice to, to actually say, I'd like to have a love relationship. I'd love to meet my unicorn, especially when you're going kind of even greater than you've ever had before. So being aware of, oh, wow, I have made a choice for change. And it could be other things. It could be like, oh, I want to get more um, fit. I want to lose weight. I want to eat healthier. Anytime you're asking to make kind of one of those big changes that deal with the matters of the heart or the physical body or spiritual path, then the trolls are going to see you rising up and go, no. And then they're going to go, you're, you're, you're not good enough. No, no, no. And then like start doing their rant from below the bridge. So that's, those are the inner critics and they absolutely can hijack your life. So all of these I'm sharing and all of these we're going to deep dive into next week because when you can change this and stop the, the, the demons from being alive in your world, then you can have something different. So the third one, yeah, the demons. The demons, um, first of all, this can be a whole, you know, probably month-long class if we wanted, but the demons are those those beings, those entities that, you know, kind of live through us. And that sounds kind of crazy, I know. But um, how many times have you found yourself kind of mimicking your mom's drama? Or how many times have you found yourself um, kind of reverting back to a younger you? So this is the space where we want to be aware of oh, wow, I'm doing that thing my mom does around relationship, or I am mimicking the drama that, you know, my best friend does around relationships. So it's kind of an, a cool space because um, this is the area that most people haven't acknowledged. So, you know, and also another big huge one is when you're doing dating and online dating you as the amazing unicorn you are being in this group you are tapped into the entire like consciousness matrix so if you say oh i'm gonna go online dating you may be aware of all of the judgments all of the funk of all of the people on there and so when we can when we can get some tools here, then what's really great is you get to have you back. So this one, we're going to be clearing, doing a couple different things around this so that you aren't kind of functioning like you're on a leash and being pulled here and there by all of the different awarenesses you have and, and actually mimicking other people's realities when it's not actually true for you. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. If any of this is ringing true, say hello and post below. I'd love to hear what you find are your biggest sort of dating demons. Okay. So we got two more. The, the fourth one are the ogres. I love this one. The ogres are those giant monsters in your world where you are, are convinced that it's bigger than you. 
So this stuff can be where you may go into some hopelessness. It may seem like, oh, I live, um, well, where I live, there are no good ones. It can be like this kind of broader thing. Oh, oh, I'm too old. It's kind of a combination of the inner trolls, but it's when we, we're really believing that this is, um, this is just how it is. It's, this is just how it is stuff. And I hear people say this and I think it's hilarious because, um, I just don't buy into those stories. And there are a million tools that we can use to transform this. I had a client who had a, this is how it is around living in a very remote area. And she was an executive in her job. So one, she was like the superstar professional woman living in a very remote area. And in the very remote area, there weren't a lot of industries or anything there. You know, she traveled and did stuff online. And yet, uh, so her story was, oh, well, there's no one that will match me here. And by, by the way, there's no one. So guess what? She's now engaged to someone who lived in that town, totally perfect match. And they've bought a second house together. They're, they share uh, the same like creative interests and it's just a really beautiful thing. So that is a huge one. And then the final one I want to play with next week are the ghosts of the past. The ghosts of the past are those things that are from childhood or past relationships that actually still haunt our present. So when you're trying to date and then you just have this like haunting thing like that comes in and interrupts that. Um, this one, there is a level of this that may actually require deeper work. And um, for many people who have done a lot of deeper work on their pain from the past, it may just be at a habitual level. So I'm going to share with you some tools on how to um, navigate that so that you're no longer um, disrupted by those ghosts from the past. So summary, you know what? This is the time of year I know is really powerful for meeting people because we're heading into the holiday seasons. There's a lot of coziness and um, awareness that, wow, it'd be fun to spend the holidays with someone. So things are alive right now. So I'd love to be able to give you some tools so that you could have some fun dates um, this before the end of the year and make 2022 the year to go from one to two. <laughs> um, and the other, so these five areas, the vampires, the inner trolls, the energetic demons, the ogres, and the ghosts of the past, all of these areas are areas that we can be present with in a different way so that you can actually have fun dating. Because the quality of the journey is the energy of what you'll receive. So I know that you don't want to have like some spooky, funky, heavy relationship. This is your chance to change that and create something different. So let's play with this. Join me. Nothing to register for. Nothing to pay for. I'm totally gifting this to you. Come. Please invite your friends. I'd like to have as many people in here as possible. So invite your friends and we'll see you in here next week starting Monday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. See you here. Bye.